A new study from May of 2023 took 45 recreational athletes, both men and women, and measured post-exercise muscle fiber and connective tissue synthesis rates after consuming either 30 grams of whey protein, 30 grams of collagen peptides, or a zero-calorie placebo. That's right. We finally have a well-designed, highly controlled study comparing collagen and whey supplements, and they used recreational athletes, and they measured connective tissue synthesis, and they controlled the diets of the participants. It's like the PubMed gods heard our prayers and decided to bless us. My name is Jason Hooper, Dr. Physical Therapy, and that's Emil behind the camera. And in this video, we're breaking down some new evidence about collagen supplementation and whether or not our opinion on it has changed. Quick shout out to Dave McLeod for the excellent breakdown of collagen research in his recent video. I highly recommend checking it out, but in this video, we'd like to cover a few more pieces of evidence we think climbers should know about. To get a good perspective on where we stand with collagen, here's a quick recap of the situation. Some studies do show muscle, connective tissue, and skin benefits from collagen peptides, but they also have some significant limitations in their study design, which throw things into question. They usually don't control for participants' diets, nor do they provide any information about their diets, nor do they compare collagen supplements to anything other than a placebo. This makes it impossible to see how collagen compares to other protein supplements like whey, and it also makes it impossible to know if the participants are getting enough protein in their diet. Furthermore, the way studies conduct their measurements is often suboptimal. Subjective questionnaires, ultrasound, and other error-prone tools are often used to formulate results. Equally concerning is the fact that many collagen studies are funded by collagen companies. This doesn't automatically make that research bad. Often, the only way research gets funded is from invested companies. However, it does make us read the text with an extra dose of skepticism. Beyond that, one of the most commonly cited studies by collagen companies was done on engineered ligaments in vitro, which is incredibly far removed from a real person consuming collagen. And finally, our current understanding of how collagen is used in our bodies doesn't seem to support collagen supplementation. The amino acids that make up collagen are non-essential, meaning in theory our bodies can make them as needed provided we have the building blocks from other protein sources. So, you should have no need for collagen supplements if you get enough complete protein in your diet. And if you're lacking dietary protein, you should be far better off using a high quality protein supplement like whey rather than a very low quality protein like collagen. Historically, this has led us at Hooper's Beta to avoid recommending collagen supplements to climbers. We don't recommend against them if you like taking them, but we also can't in good conscience recommend everyone go buy it. So let's take a look at some new evidence and see if anything has changed. By the way, this video is not sponsored by anyone, so if you want to support this channel, please consider using the affiliate links on our web store, many of which will get you discounts on our favorite products like the Tindec Progressor and Kaya Pro subscription. Link in the description. The researchers took a highly controlled approach to this study, which is a godsend for us nerds. Unlike previous collagen studies, they even controlled the participants' diet. Using measurements from things like blood serum and even muscle biopsies, they found some interesting results when it came to both muscle protein and connective tissue synthesis in the 45 participants. For muscle protein synthesis, they found that the whey protein group showed a significant increase post-exercise compared to collagen and placebo groups. Neat! Though this is not really surprising, seeing as whey is a complete protein with a high concentration of leucine, which are crucial attributes for muscle protein synthesis. Collagen supplements, on the other hand, have very limited amino acid profile and relatively little leucine. So this appears to be one more pebble on the mountain of evidence showing that adequate doses of high quality protein are critical for muscle repair and growth. Collagen is simply not a replacement for that. Translation, all climbers need to be getting ample amounts of high quality protein. Of course, climbers are generally more concerned about connective tissue in relation to collagen supplements, and luckily the researchers looked at that too. The study showed increases in connective tissue synthesis rates after exercise in all three groups, with no significant differences between groups. Statistically speaking, they were all the same. What does that mean? It's not what the participants ate, it's what they did. Exercise is what increased connective tissue synthesis, not the supplements. So, if you want to strengthen your connective tissue, of course you need to get good sleep and eat well, but you also need to train. No amount of collagen, or any supplement for that matter, can make up for a lack of exercise. And according to this study, collagen peptides do not appear to improve connective tissue growth even with exercise. 
Case closed, right? Collagen officially doesn't do anything and we can finally move on, right? Uh, no. I've seen several YouTubers using this study as the nail in the coffin for collagen, but as much as it pains me to say, I don't think that's the right approach. While this study did an admirable job of controlling for variables and collecting data, it still has some key limitations. One potential issue is that the connective tissue they studied was intramuscular connective tissue, meaning it was from inside the muscle rather than from a tendon or ligament. Could this kind of connective tissue respond differently than something like our pulleys? Possibly. But at least one study shows that connective tissue synthesis rates are similar between all types of connective tissue surrounding the knee. So I don't think it's unreasonable to apply this collagen study's findings to tendons and ligaments. However, there is a much bigger issue at play the study's duration. The participants only completed six sets of a single exercise, barbell squats, on a single day. The measurements were all taken five hours after this single bout of exercise, and that is what all the study's conclusions are based on. In other words, this is a very limited set of data with no medium or long-term measurements. Now, I can't really fault the researchers for this. When it comes to human studies, basically the more control you exert in human trials, the less willing they'll be to participate. It's an unfortunate reality, and it means I'm not willing to call this study definitive, though I certainly find it more useful than most. With that in mind, where does that leave us when it comes to collagen supplementation? If we're actually interested in an unbiased perspective, we have to acknowledge that we simply don't know everything there is to know about collagen synthesis. In fact, there are some research papers arguing glycine, a key collagen amino, may in fact be conditionally essential. In other words, our bodies can make enough for us to function, but perhaps not enough to be ideal at all times. So a collagen supplement could be beneficial in that case. Now these papers involve a lot of assumptions without enough hard evidence to convince me personally, but they should still be considered. Beyond that, we have to consider the cost benefit analysis of collagen peptide supplements. Well, far from proven, there is a general trend of benefits to soft tissues in the studies. Numerous experiments show positive outcomes for things like muscle growth, patellar tendon stiffness, skin growth, skin elasticity, skin hydration, and more. These studies are too flawed to truly argue in favor of collagen, in my opinion. On the other hand, none of the studies show adverse effects from collagen supplementation. Unless, of course, you're trying to replace high-quality protein with collagen, which is a bad idea. I'm definitely not willing to say collagen peptides are effective at this time, but I'd also place them higher up on the list of worth a shot than most other supplements. If you're interested in the potential small gains you could get from safe supplements and you have the funds to support that, I see little reason to hold out. For everyone else, you can rest easy knowing that if you're already eating a healthy diet, you won't benefit much or at all from most supplements, though that won't stop many of us from trying them anyway. There is also the rather hilarious irony of the collagen hype to consider, which Dave perfectly summarizes in his video. But processed meat, like sausages or chicken nuggets, came into existence in part to make use of the collagenous parts of the animal carcass that are left over when the fine cuts of muscle meat are removed. And people were literally protesting outside McDonald's to have them remove these parts from the burgers and the nuggets. And yet, that if you take that same carcass with all the skin and the bones and tendons and trotters and chop it up and degrade it with enzymes and chemically disinfect it and then powder it, package it in a bright plastic bag and then sell it back to you for £40 a kilo, <laughs> then people will gladly add it to their food three times a day. <laughs> Just remember, there are far more effective methods for improving your health than taking supplements. Want stronger muscles? Work out. Want stronger connective tissue? Train. Want to slow skin aging? Use UV protection. Want more energy? Eat and sleep better. Be sure to check out those affiliate links if you feel like it. And until next time, train, climb, send, and repeat. Train, climb, supplement?